uh, by uh, maybe our, our Bokito we time around nine o'clock, mm -hmm. I think, even before maybe we finish, and then by uh, ten thirty here, that's five thirty in Lithuania, and we sit down and we watch and the uh, uh, Robert posted, you know, live, and then I I just go and then I watch. That's John and sometimes Pastor Paul here, yeah, British, and we listen, we encourage it so much. Sometimes, you know, just one sentence comes from uh, Pastor John, and I write it down. And it's so uplifting and so encouraging. So anybody else is watching through the online, I want to welcome you all. You are not tuned in by accident, by mistake, but I want you to pay attention very carefully. Don't, don't change the channel, don't turn it. Listen what God has to say. So let's all bow our heads and pray, and ask the Holy Spirit what God has for you, what God has for me. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity that you have given us together to enjoy in your presence, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. You have come, you have come down, Lord, on our praises. I thank you, Lord, for blessing us with your precious presence, Lord. We love you and praise you. Lord, I thank you. As we start to dedicate your word, Lord, I ask you to open our hearts, Lord. Open our spirits, Lord. And to deposit into our spirits, Lord, that uh, logos will become a rama. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for touching every person here, Lord. That this time will not be wasted, Lord. They receive from you. Holy Spirit, I thank you for quickening the word, Lord. Make it alive in their spirits, Lord. So that they will bring, believe it, they will hang on to it, Lord. And they apply that word in their lives. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for blessing this time, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the, every word that comes out of my mouth, Lord will be blessed, will be anointed, and bring forth the results, Lord. Lord, I thank you for this time. We love you and praise you. We give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, when I was praying, you know, I was long flight from Frankfurt to Miami. It's the nine hours, 40 minutes, almost 10 hours. And I'm praying. I have my Bible only in my bag, Bible, passport, and my book. That's all. I don't have anything else. And I, I started opening and reading and meditating, and one word came. Because I take it very seriously. When, when the chance comes to uh, uh, preach the gospel, I take it very seriously. Because, you know, you take your time in your life and put out all that effort and come here to sit down and listen to what God has to say. And if I don't give what God has in my heart, that would be a blessing to you. I'm wasting my time, I'm wasting your time. So I take it very seriously. Please don't uh, let the war, thoughts go wander. Please pay attention here what God has to say. And one word came in my in my spirit, uh, in my seat, sitting in the airplane. Problems. <laughs> That's a good message. Problems. <laughs> uh, so and then I was thinking about it. And uh, let's see that today. There is not even one person that does not have a problems in the world today. Some kind of problems. I did not say lack, I did not say, you know, suffering or anything, but some problems. Either mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, any way, in relationships, in family, you know, any way, there are, there are problems. Sometimes we have more than one problem. So, so now, uh, let's see now what to do, how to deal with the problems. How to deal with the problems. You see, having a problem is not a problem. How you look at the problem is the problem. Now listen, having a problem is not a problem. Everybody has it. That's not the problem. But how you look at the problem is the problem. Amen. Now for example, all the ladies, you love your hair, yeah? yeah. Mm. You love your hair very much. One lady, some kind of infection came, lost all the hair and left three hairs only. Three. <laughs> three. <laughs> what do you do? I mean, you, you know, in some ordinary person, they would not go anywhere. They stay in the room. They buy all kinds of wigs, whatever it is. And she decided, I'm not going to let this bother me. Amen. Three hair only, three hanging. She said, she's thinking like this. She said, what kind of hairstyle I'm going to have tomorrow? <laughs> and she come up with the idea. She said, oh, since I have a three hair, I'm going to have a braid my hair. She braided her hair. And she had a wonderful day. And enjoy her life. That day is gone. That night she lost one hair and left only two. What do you do? How do you look at that problem? She said, What kind of hairstyle I'm gonna have tomorrow? She said, I'm gonna have a separation. <laughs> one hair this side, one hair separation. Yeah, wow, that's a good hairstyle. 
separation. Then she had a good day. And that night she lost one more hair. One hair hanging. And she looked at the problem. She said, what kind of hairstyle I'm going to have tomorrow? She come up with a nice, I'm a brilliant idea. I'm going to have a ponytail. <laughs> Only one hair. <laughs> she had a ponytail. Oh boy, that time she lost that hair too. What do you do? He said, look at this one. I mean, how, how, I'm telling you, how you look at the problem? She said, thank God tomorrow I don't have to wash my hair. <laughs> no problem. There is nothing can that defeat you if you look at the problem is not a problem. Think about it this one. Right it. Problem is a promotion in disguise. Problem is a promotion in disguise. Or you can write like this one. Problem is a test from God. God is testing you. It's a test from God. You can run away from problem, but sooner or later, you're going to face that problem. You're going to face that test. You will. Problem is a promotion. Problem is a stepping stone. If you look at the problem as not as a problem, how you look at the problem is the problem. I'm going to bring you one, one miracle Jesus performed. And then I'm going to leave you. How, how Jesus looked at the problem. How disciples looked at the problem. And how, why God even take the time to write in the Bible that miracle. Why? Just to, you know, write it down, fill the pages? No. So now, this is the one Jesus performed the 35 miracles, I believe. 35. And of all 35 miracles, only one miracle that Jesus performed is written in all four Gospels. Jesus' resurrection was written in all four Gospels, but that's Jesus resurrected. But the miracle that Jesus performed while living on the earth, can anybody can guess what that miracle? Among all miracles, Jesus performed many. Among all those miracles, 35 of them, one, in all four Gospels mentioned. Do you think it's a coincidence? No. Jesus is teaching us. He he mentioned something one time in the Bible that we can learn from it. But if he mentioned twice, God is saying pay attention. If he mentioned three times, watch out, this is very important. If he mentions four times, oh my God, that's so very, very important. God knew that we're going to have problems. God knew we're going to be worried. We're going to be nervous. We're going to be anxious. That's why this, this miracle is mentioned all four Gospels. It's about the problem. You know what's that miracle? Feeding 5,000 in all four Gospels. You can write it down. Matthew 4, Mark 9, I think. Mark 6, Luke 9, and John 6. All these Four Gospels mentioned. Mark four, Matthew 14, 14. Mark 6, 34. I'm just giving, you can write it down. This is, we know, we don't have to read it, but uh, I just give you. Luke 9, 12. John 6, 5. All four of them. Now, from this time, I guarantee that everybody here heard it. Feeding 5,000. Sunday school children learn it. It's very popular. Everybody heard it. Probably you heard that message many times. But I want you to pay attention carefully. Today, there will be something that you will look at it. And you will learn something different. You will learn something different today. So now, if one miracle that Jesus chose, or Holy Spirit chose, to be written in four Gospels, in four different angles, looking at the same problem, God is saying, hey, there is something I want to teach you from this parable. Amen. Listen carefully. Something. So now we know Jesus was teaching. And all day, he just started his uh, seminar in the morning, 9 o'clock, after breakfast. And people started coming, thousands and thousands. This is the largest gathering that Jesus ever had. More than 20,000 people, Bible scholars say. 
on this on this particular seminar three day seminar boy jesus is teaching i mean on every topic wonderful every topic i mean three day seminar and by the end of the three days eh hey, here is the problem they all need to eat something and disciples come up to jesus and they say jesus you know you doing a wonderful teaching man all things in one seminar three days boy what a wonderful seminar but people are hungry people are hungry they need to eat they need to eat and you know what their solution was disciples solution was jesus send these people away send them away to the nearby villages to buy food to buy food that's what we do what's the problem for disciples the people are the problem and they say it send them away how many times we pray lord remove my problem take get rid of this problem send them away god wants to deal with the problem but we say remove it from me lord send it away i don't want to deal with it i don't want to deal with it now look at it. i want you to see the difference jesus attitude jesus mentality is you deal with the problem you you don't run away with the problem you deal with the problem and uh, this is what god is looking at you and saying we are the problem solvers Amen. say to yourself say i am the problem solver i am the problem solver that's what god is looking at you Amen. that's what god is looking at you but the disciples thank you today lord send them away boy how many times do we wish our problems would disappear mm. you know non christians they take a beer and sleep and then they say think when i get up all my problems will disappear <laughs> somehow <laughs> and they get up one more problem at it had it <laughs> and then one more at it maybe that idea <laughs> I don't know. How many? And you know, sadly, even the Bible believing believers, born again believers, thirty years believers, they still have the same mentality. Say, Lord, get rid of this one. And God is saying, deal with that. You are the problem solver, and you can get the victory for your problem. Yes, Amen. You can. Amen. That's the main purpose. Jesus chose to written down this miracle in every gospel, four different angles. Let's look at three of them. Three, three angles. Uh, let's look at Matthew fourteen fourteen. Let's look at it. You see, and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude, twenty thousand people, and was moved with the compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. And then, and. Uh, the disciples came next verse 15 and when it was evening his disciples came to saying this is a what is that underline that place desert place, desert place. <laughs> you know i tell you every word in the bible for a purpose every word not even one word not even one letter by mistake what is that he says it's a desert place now these are the other translations look at this empty place desolate place remote place useless place desert place nothing grows here wasteland isolated place wilderness lonely place no breakthrough here no blessing here no victory here it's all useless place and you know what what we are saying to god is This is the place that you can do any miracle. God is saying, "Boy, oh, God is so special. God performs some miracles in the waste place, in the isolated place, desolate place. That's the disciples' excuse. Jesus, this is the wilderness, so you cannot perform miracle. Send the problem away. Send the people away to the shop. 
This is a desolate place. You know, I got a news for you. When God wants to deal with you, he will take you to the isolated place. Amen. When God wants to deal with you or deal with the problem, he takes you in a lonely place. He can deal with you one-on-one. -on -one. That's the best place for God to perform a miracle. Look at what's the first, first thing is. It's a useless place, Lord. How many times we come to a conclusion? Lord, there is no blessing here. <laughs> there is nothing growing here. It's a useless place. It's a wasteland. It's, you know, desert. Mm. Nothing. And that's the place God chose. Jesus chose to perform a miracle. Oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Then when God starts to deal with you, he will take you to the isolated place. And that's the first point they say. Uh, Jesus, this is a desert place and the time is too past. This is the second one. The second reason we give that God cannot do miracle in my life or maybe the problem cannot be solved because they're saying it's a desert place and the second thing is too late. Evening, Lord. So what? Jesus cannot see in the evening? Mm -hmm. It's the evening, Lord. In some of the translations it says, it's too late. It's no chance. It's over. It's already dark. No way something is going to happen now. You see how, how the reasons are coming for them? To deal with the problem. Jesus knew exactly there will be 20,000 people in three days and the disciples have a chance to deal with the problem first thing they said this is a isolated place nothing grows here it's a desert place and then it's too dark it's over lord it's too already over all the daytime is gone already how many times we come to conclusion that's it it's over Doctor said it's over. Lawyer said it's over. It's too late. How many times we hear that? Especially when there is a problem. It's too late. Nothing grows here. And then, third one. In John's Gospel, uh, the same story is written in the sixth chapter. And Jesus asked Philip, very, you know, to test his faith. He says, how much money or how much bread we need for this multitude? You know, Peter, uh, Philip's answer was, how many can you, can you tell what the Philip's answer was? Even a 200 denarii. Yeah, man, John 6, 5. John 6, 5. Even if we have a 200 denarii, we cannot feed them. Give them a small snack. Little bit, little bit. It's not enough. It's not enough. That's the third reason. The, the disciples put it. It's not enough. Whatever we have in our hands, it's not enough. It's not going to deal with our problem. So send it away. Send it away. You know, whenever the problem hits, when the problem is really tough one, we all three excuses we use it. It's very easy. To escape from a problem, it's very easy. Very easy to think. It's a desert place, nothing is gross. It's too late. Already evening came, dark. And it's not enough. What is it learn? Two fish and five loaves, 20,000 people. You know, they said, we have how much? We have two, two fish and five loaves, right? And, uh, and Jesus said, okay, that's enough. And they say, excuse me. Oh yeah, that's enough. Let them sit down in a row. And they all go like that. Jesus, did you go to school? <laughs> we got 20,000 people here. And then you, you give them a shit. Make up. All these three reasons beg us 
that the problem would go away. Problem would go away. Amen. Today I want to I wanna challenge you. And I want to encourage you through this parable, which is written in the four gospels, the main lesson God is giving us, any problem that comes in our lives, it's a promotion in this life. Amen. And God wants to deal with that. God wants us to deal with the problem. You know, in any company, in any organization, who gets the promotion? The person, the employee who solves the problem. Yeah? Problem solver gets the promotion. In any company, that's what it is. Boss gives uh, some assignment, some task, and then whoever solves the problem, they get promoted. One time, two times, you know, every time they're solving the problem, they say, man, this guy is good. So they get a promotion. Supervisor, manager, and boss, and more higher and higher. Same thing. God is looking for a problem solver. And they get a promotion. Amen. Amen. They get a promotion. So what's the problem in your life? Is that, is that bothering you and say, I want to get rid of it? Always, listen, always, whatever the problems come out, come out on time, on our on our path, Jesus expects you to solve it through stepping stone and go for God. Higher. Higher. Trust me, all kinds of problems come in all areas. Sometimes they all come at the same time. Amen. Sometimes one by one. You all go through it. We all go through it. But today, God wants me to strengthen. God wants me to encourage you not to run away from the problem or not to push away the problem. Say, Lord, give me the strength. I'm going to overcome this one. I'm going to solve it. I'm going to solve it. Even though it looks like it's nothing is going to happen here, it's a desolate place, no breakthrough, no victory, it's a dry place, it's a desert place, it's a wilderness, nothing is growing here, it's very dry and dead, but I believe you are a miracle worker, like you performed a miracle, feeding 20,000 people, you will do the miracle, and I believe it, and you watch it, what happens, you watch it, what happens. God will perform. God is actually a specialist in doing miracles in the dry place. He's dealing with you in isolated place on one-on-one. -on, -one, on one on one. Your rewards are determined by the problems you're willing to solve. What kind of problem you're facing today? And what kind of problem you are solving lately? Or what kind of problem you are asking God remove it. This is the parable. It's the lesson for us. How to do. This Jesus chose to deal with that problem. He said, he told the disciples, Jesus, it's already too late. Send them away. And he said, you give them something to eat. Excuse me? He expects them to feed 20,000 people. He said, you give them something to eat. I mean, it, it sounds crazy. You know, when God says like this, please listen. When he says, you deal with the problem, that means he expects you, and he thinks that you can deal with it. Otherwise, he would not ask you. He would not ask you. He would not ask you. They, Jesus, I mean, honestly expect told people that they can deal with this one. Jesus' attitude and disciples' attitude completely contrast. In this parable. Jesus, we all know, I mean, this is a, like a Sunday school lesson. Jesus fed 5,000 men, 20,000 people. But the lesson is a profound lesson that applies for every believer in every country, in every place. Every time we say we face a problem, we can be encouraged from this one. You know what? God expects me to deal with this problem. That means God has a solution. I will overcome. I will overcome. This thing will not stop me. Amen. This thing will not stop me. Amen. You know, recently I, I met, I preached in Germany and one pastor's daughter um, came to our, our, our place in Lithuania. She, she is a pastor's daughter, 
and uh, on file for guard and uh, for a long time no marriage and uh, recently somebody got maybe before the covid i think god brought her from uh, siberia the russian german people in russia born and he speaks russian and german together so um, i'm fine for that this man so uh, you know what happened they got married in the middle of the covid only they married outside in the fields no said nothing you know they got only seven people allowed that's all and uh, they had a wonderful daughter was born uh, probably eight months old one morning fever came in a few days she died but nobody knows what's the reason having the baby died i mean they both were devastated young couple first daughter beautiful healthy healthy daughter everything is going on very well and now she decided now they both the wife and husband they come they said you know we have to make a decision here either we're gonna completely follow god or we quit with everything and we just go home and they made the decision that lady the girl told me she said i don't want to give the devil chance to laugh at me i don't want to give the devil that i'm a, I'm, I'm, a, i'm a loser i lost it i don't want to give the chance and they both prayed right there it's a it's there at daytime now listen they both prayed lord we're gonna follow you more just now the doctor is still in the hospital room dying they cleaning and everything they doing the testing and this side in the room they crying i mean you know beautiful healthy daughter died suddenly no sickness nothing and they decided they both pray lord we're going to serve you i don't want to give the devil a chance to steal my joy nothing and then they said lord i want somebody to encourage me the pastor the who is in the leader who can encourage you immediately he got thought i need to call rodney harbor and that man husband don't even speak english very well german and you know russian english doesn't speak very well he called he sent a message on the instagram who lost our daughter just now still in the in the room died mm. what to do that was in florida time three in the morning florida time and rodney holbrun was up and he received a message he replied right away because he knew he lost the daughter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh boy and the, the the word of god encouraged it through pastor rodney holbrun i mean they were so there in, in germany both were so encouraged and later on he called on the phone and he encouraged every day he called them don't stop doing it for God. Keep on doing it. You know, just in last month of May, he called both of them to the pastor's conference here in uh, Tampa. Pastor's conference. He gave them a one-month holiday in Florida. One-month holiday. He paid everything. The tickets, the hotel, the honeymoon, every, they never had a honeymoon. He gave them a honeymoon. Now, guess what? She's pregnant now. <laughs> she came to Lithuania with a seven-month pregnancy. And she gave the testimony in our church. I mean, the whole church, church is packed uh, in our place. Everybody. I told them, I said, you know what? If you have a small excuse, somebody did not say good morning and you're going to quit the church. I mean, this is, that's yeah. silly. Amen. And listen to the testimony. She lost the baby, seven-month baby. Died suddenly. And then you're thinking about somebody did not say good morning. Mm -hmm. Or somebody did not laugh at you. And then I'm not going to church. Come on. And uh, you know, I, I put the testimony on the Facebook. How many people what she had courage to do? It's amazing. This, this is the thing. I think, how do you look at the problem? Is the problem. How do you look at the problem? Disciples look at the problem. He thought, they thought it's unsolvable. You cannot solve it. And they said, Lord, send it away. Send them away. Trust me. Many times the, the problem come, it looks like that we cannot solve it. We cannot solve it. It's impossible. It looks like there is no solution. But trust me, 
Just because you think there is no solution, that does not mean there is no solution in God's way. You think there is no solution. You think. You know, when COVID hit it, boy, it looks like, you know what, isolated place for us. We live in the countryside. There is no even hot spot. Everything cut off. Everything cut off. You cannot travel. Everything cut off. It's the isolated places. You know what? In the middle of the COVID, God blessed us in every area. Yes. 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 In the middle of the COVID. Amen. In the middle of the COVID. Amen. I will tell you more, you know, when I say it. I mean, it's abundantly. Amen. Abundantly means abundantly. Amen. Everything was cut off. It's a, God took us to the isolated place to deal with it. Amen. And I'm glad. And you know what? I tell the, uh, <laughs> When you were supposed to wear a mask, you know, it's a compulsory. I said, man, that's a blessing. And they said, you know, some people in our church, they said, how, you, how is this a blessing? Man, you have a mask and you pray in tongues, nobody knows. <laughs> I'm praying in tongues in the shopping center. <laughs> mask is there, nobody sees. <laughs> I said, it's a blessing. How do you look at the problem in the problem? I did not look at it like a problem. I look at it like this is something God is going to deal with that. God is doing something. Oh boy. I mean, I will, I will give you all the things that God did. It. It's, so now, I want to encourage you. Hallelujah. And also, there is a, uh, there is a unique way to deal with the problem. Not everybody deals the problem the same way. Now listen. Not everybody deals the problems the same way. Amen. Everybody has their own way. You know, Japanese company produces soaps, beautiful soaps, very brand name. It's a real story, brand name. And somehow, one time, the soaps packages were sealed, but no soap inside. So they were sent all over the country in the supermarkets, in the you know grocery shops, soaps there and empty. I think almost thirty thousand packets went all over the country. It is so embarrassing for them. And it's a problem. How to deal with this problem so that it will not happen again next time? 30,000 soap packets, no soap inside. People bought it and they were like astonished and they say, oh man, it's a, so the, the, this big soap company embarrassed and they said, okay, we need to deal with this problem. So they appointed one uh, computer science guy and he put together all his brains, everything together, he created with a million euros robot. And the robot stands there, and if there is an empty packet, it packs it away. So it will not happen. One million euros, the problem solved. Mm. <laughs> the same thing happened in India with the soap company. You know how they dealt with them? They bought a $30 fan. Fan, put it on with the high fan. If there's the empty packet, it blasts away. Thirty dollars <laughs> and a million dollar robot. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> How you deal with the problem? You see, not everybody deals the same way. Everybody has a different way, but there is a there is a the main key lesson is that God wants you to be a problem solver. Amen. Say it again, you know, everybody. I'm a problem solver. I'm a problem solver. Yeah. And that's the kind of people God likes. We, we solve the problems. And you say, we solve the problems. All kinds of problems. Mental problems, emotional problems, spiritual problems, physical problems, financial problems, every problem. God's children solve it. Problem solvers. And that kind of people God promotes. And that's the reason this miracle is written in the Bible. So today I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you. If you are going through some problem and then looks like, you know what, I'm not going to deal with this one. Anymore. It's so hard. I cannot because, you know, I don't want to even deal with that one. Push it away. Holy Spirit is saying to you today, you can. You can overcome. And you can get the victory over this one. You can get the get the breakthrough. 
you have to break through. Don't say it's too late. Don't say it's a, it's a dry place. Nothing grows here. Don't say it's not enough. When we these three together, when we say it, then there's no conflict for us to push the problem away. Yeah. I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you today. What problem are you willing to solve now? What problem are you? did you solve today? What problem at what cost? And God, God wants us to deal with the problems. You see, happiness is not the absence of problem. Happiness is it's the ability to deal with the problem. That's the happiness. Happiness is not the absence of problems. Happiness is to deal with the problems, or the ability to deal with them. Mm. Oh boy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Now this one. Lastly, I will close with this one. Uh, why we are not solving problem? Three things. Three things. Either we focus on the place, we focus on the problem, or we focus on the person. Either we focus on the place, place. They said it's a desolate place, Lord. Nothing grows here. Empty place. It's a desert. Either we focus on the place, or we focus on the problem. They say, Lord, this is too many people, and it's not enough. We have only two fish and five loaves. Or we focus on the person. See, I cannot do it. But, but the lesson is, what the God tells, you can do it. You can solve any problem. Any problem. Amen. Any problem. The problems you face either defeat you or develop you. Mm. The problems you face today either defeat you or develop you. Or in other words, or mature you. Having a problem is not the one we get matured, our faith strengthens. Dealing with the problems makes us stronger. Dealing with the problems makes us mature. Dealing with the problems makes our faith stronger. Makes faith stronger. So today, this is the message I want to give to you. Deal with the problem. You can. You can. Doesn't matter where you are. What place you are, doesn't matter. You might say, well, Lord, I am alone. I'm, I'm lonely. I'm isolated. I'm, I'm in the desert place. Nothing is happening here. Nothing is happening. God comes to your rescue. Amen. Jesus performed the greatest miracle in the desolate place where disciples thought it's not possible. Where disciples thought it's not, it's too late. Where disciples thought it's not enough. Jesus performed it. Mm -hmm. And you know what? He performed not only feeding little by little, abundantly. Even the crumbs left over. Crumbs left over. That's the kind of mentality that Jesus had. Jesus wants to deal with every problem he faces today. And disciples want to deal with it. Let's go. I know so many. So many people are there in this room. Holy Spirit is talking to you. Holy Spirit is talking to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God wants us to give the promotion. God wants to take us to the higher level. Problem is not to stop you. Problem is to promote you to the next level. To the next level. And if you have that attitude, and if you have that view, anything can be solved. Anything can be solved. Could you please come? Uh, maybe we could maybe do play something softer. Something softer. I'm already done. I don't want to stretch it, but I want to I want to pray for you today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you are sitting here today, and if you are facing the problems, I don't know what it is. You know, it's been a four years. I have no clue what you are facing today. Whether it's small or big, God wants you to believe that you are a problem solver. You are a problem solver. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Thank you, Lord. I sense in my spirit that as some of you are praying to God, Lord, remove this problem from me. Remove this. If you just remove it, I will be fine. But you know, Holy Spirit is encouraging us to deal with it. To deal with it. And we're going to deal with it. 
Just because you do not have the solution, that does not mean there is no solution. There is a solution. Jesus did it. Jesus performed the miracle. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If the Holy Spirit is nudging you, if the Holy Spirit is, you know, speaking to you, I want you to come to the front. I want you to come to the front. I'm going to pray that God would give you the solution how to deal with that problem. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You know, last year, October, I had a, you know, start losing hair on my back here. Uh, almost that much fat is completely on the ground like this. And it's yeah, growing bigger. And uh, I mean, there is no medicine for that here, this back here, big one. And it's so visible, so visible. I said, you know, uh, many times when the ladies get this disease, uh, they lose all the hair and there's no medicine, nothing. And one time, you know, during this period, you know, when God is dealing with this one, I put my right hand, one time I said like this, I put on my, uh, the bald hair here, I said, hey, grow in Jesus' name. One time I said that, one time. And uh, December, uh, until December, Nothing happened until December, almost two and a half months. Still looks like growing, but I would thank the Lord. And then once in a while I asked Diana, I said, is the hair growing back? <laughs> One time she said, no, it's getting bigger. <laughs> I said again, I put my hand on the on the ball head. I said, I command your hair to grow. Now, everything is gone. By January it started growing. But, uh, January was still thin, very thin. She said, thin and white hair. I said, no, I don't like that. I said, I don't like that. Completely normal and full. And now, yeah, completely done. By, by March, everything is came down, completely. And the second thing I want to tell you, uh, now before, you know, the Bible script, I, 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 I needed glasses. And I said, you know what, I need to pray. I need to pray. Lord, I want to see my my uh, reading Bible, every letter, small letters, I have to see perfectly. Now I read without glasses. Um, and when I put the glasses, I'm making blurry. I see now, even telephone messages, before, the uh, so, you know, blurry, blurry, and I use glasses, you know, to read it. Now, perfect. Even small script, I see very clearly. Yeah, very clearly. You know, there is nothing impossible with God. Nothing impossible with God. God is so good, amen? Amen. Who's going to come back tonight? Amen. Okay, amen. we're expecting you, amen? Amen. 6.30 tonight. Amen. And uh, God is so good. All the time. Amen. amen. And who received today? Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God is on the move, amen? Amen. And then Brother John over here, he's going to go see him real soon. Right. Next Maybe. summer. If you go, if you go, I'll go. <laughs> if the Lord ever lets me. Yeah. He hasn't, he hasn't released you yet, so I got a lot of stuff to do, just like you guys. And uh, so, but our finances can go and preach, amen. Mm, amen. Yes. And minister amen. to people. Your feet. So that is awesome. Amen. Very encouraging. It's awesome to see what the Lord did, how He's built His whole ministry, amen. amen. Mm. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this time of fellowship. We thank you for the offerings today going into uh, Brother Radiant's ministry, him and Diana. And we thank you, Lord, for everybody here today. And we thank you, Lord, that everybody goes and is refreshed after service and, and, and come back tonight in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 Okay, we love you guys. Come somebody else.